computer. So you asked the difference between the mapping and the visualization? Yeah. So uh, mapping will be almost exclusively focused on spatial data that has latitude and longitude, whereas visualization is more conceptual in terms of not just spatial data, but time series data, how do we plot and create uh, visual symbols for a whole broad range of data types. So the viz we would say would be significantly more general, uh, everything but spatial data, and the mapping is a chance to zoom in more specifically to spatial data. Um, that's currently how they're, um, they're divided out. Thank you. Yep. Um, I taught the mapping in the land department the first term here, um, and I was a mapping enthusiast in grad school, so uh, mapping is great fun. Okay, uh, any last questions before we do some class keeping stuff? I was just going to make a comment, and you yep. probably don't have the uh, overview or anything laid out, but I'm actually really intrigued about, about the database for data mapping. I'm really intrigued mm -hmm. on what that's going to look like. Yeah, the, so our, did you say that what the database class would look like? Yeah. Um, the way we think about the database class is we want to give you experience designing a relational database uh, from scratch using the Postgres database system, which is free and open source. And oh, okay. That gives you a chance to uh, get a little experience working with a database server that is not on your local computer and mm -hmm. designing table schemas that would reflect a data set that you're trying to read in and then learning how to take a big flat file that might come out of uh, a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. that into a table, um, and then oh, okay. stories to pull that data back out and visualize it in, in your chosen tool. Probably a spreadsheet to start with, because spreadsheets are the wizard of data, data analysts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're cool. excited to spin up. We realize that there's enough um, there's enough to learn about SQL. SQL is the language of relational databases. So uh, sometimes you'll hear people kind of use databases and SQL interchangeably. Um, but we want to give you a chance to learn SQL super well. Um, we had a, one of our advisory committee members said he hired a PhD that did machine learning who didn't know how to run SQL queries and get anything out of a database, um, which is a big gap uh, to have a PhD in machine learning and not know how to touch a database uh, is a mess. So we're trying to be responsive to our advisory committee and fill gaps that we're hearing about when people are coming into the job force. Okay. Um, anything else? We'll move on to some class keeping stuff. I have a real quick question, if yeah. you don't mind. I hate to go back to the mapping and the visualization, but okay. if, you're, if you're dealing with a lot of large databases, a huge um, big data, data mining, um, I work for a, a healthcare mm -hmm. and I'm doing a lot of deep data diving, yeah. um, scraping databases, pulling data from table A, table E, table C to create my own database. Yeah. Would you recommend the mapping or the visualization course? Probably the mapping. Um, if you haven't had experience doing mapping specifically, um, I think you'll find that a, a, a fresher skill set than the viz, which sounds like you probably covered quite a bit of data data handling and management. So. Uh, yeah, doing a lot of stuff in um, BI. Yeah, so I would say mapping would be a good track for you. Okay, thank you. You bet. All right, um, so how does this class work? What's this, what's this all about? Let me erase this. Um, let's get our, our syllabus posted. Not posted, I'll show you where the syllabus is. So let me do a quick screen share. Oh, 28, so good. Um, so here's our master sequence um, course syllabus should pop up as a PDF. Um, the uh, course descriptions and learning outcomes are there for you to uh, review that I have implemented in our in our schedule. What I'd like to do is review the nitty gritty over on the right of the standard course stuff, and that'll take about 15 minutes. Um, some notes on, on contact. So we had, as you probably know, massive uh, layoffs within the college. We Three quarters of all of our support staff were furloughed. Um, so if you have 
um, questions related to the larger data analytics. We have contact information for our department chair, uh, Rebecca Elinich, now Dr. DuPont, uh, and my dean, Dean Brenda Treadle at South. Um, and so now I'll just uh, give you some notes on the specifics of how I run my class. And I'm going to do that using several other pages from Technology Rediscovery Home. Um, the first is textbook. Uh, I have didn't start with a, a textbook because there's a lot of uh, open source tools out there, but I, I came across this one that has been so positive and cool and is integrated in, in such a useful way with their online stat key tool that I, I decided to go with it. Um, and I sent an email about this, I think, uh, a month ago or something, and following up now. Um, there's a family. They're all last named Locke. See, these are the Locks. Um, they wrote, uh, they sit around the table at dinner and talk about statistics. So they decided to write a stats book. Um, and so they uh, have two editions out of their stats book, and they're both called Unlocking the Power of Statistics. Um, I have a, a set of class copies that I that I use when we're meeting in person. I never paid more than 15 bucks for one copy. So it should be pretty uh, price reasonable. Again, I encourage you to go with the first edition uh, because they didn't change particularly much uh, and you can get it uh, cheaper uh, than the second edition. Um, I, will, I will not be assigning uh, problems and such out of the textbook per se, but I'll be using it significantly as we go through some of our analytic tools. And particularly, they have one of the best online environments for um, data crunching. My little dot cam is not white balancing nicely. Um, and it's a free tool that is a companion to uh, this book, and it's called StatKey. Uh, and so let's go take a quick look at that, because if you're the tinkering type, uh, StatKey is, is your your go-to place. So I'm going to switch back to here and then share screen. So I linked StatKey under external resources. So the way I organize this page is um, it's a great big index of thousands of links for all of my classes and so data analytics is one section in the big page and each one of the data classes that I teach gets its own uh, section so my viz class is down here um, and then there's a bunch of shared resources over in the right column uh, that we use across several courses so we'll start working with git and version control and then all a bunch of external resources are under external resources so if you jump into stat key this is cool because they've actually got all of the data sets that are part of the book already loaded into the the stat key tool so you can click a link to one of their javascript based uh, tools and um, you can load their data set right away so they um, as you as we work through stuff in the book you can jump in and say well they did a um, did a survey of how long it took folks in Atlanta to get to work and that data set is already built in so here's the here's the sample of drivers and uh, you can start crunching. So we can actually pull um, the original samples here and we'll explore the process of sampling from a sample to create a confidence interval uh, and so forth. And so this tool is, is free and accompanies the book and we'll use it significantly throughout the class. Um, so StatKey and the textbook are um, resources to get your hands on soon. Um, questions on the book or stat key? All right. What was the book called again? Uh, it's called Unlocking the Power of Data. Um, it's also linked under the first external resource is their homepage, and you can see the ISBN and picture of the Locke family. Um, so that's the book to get. All right. Thanks. You bet. Um, so the course lays out by week. And uh, most of the time we'll have a, what I call like a, a mini project that we work on throughout the, uh, the session in an evening. 
and then there'll usually be some kind of tidy up or analytic task that I'll invite you to do over the rest of the week. Um, but in general, I would say this is a much lighter course in terms of outside of class work. Uh, I focused quite a bit on designing in-class activities that are robust and interesting um, and, and tried to make it less about how much time can you extract from outside of class and rather how can we make in-class in time uh, thorough and, and, and enlivening.